Let's go back to Kerry and down to is it Raj. You have your hand up. So Raj opens us to truth, God's truth. It does, but you can receive every single truth there is possible, and you still won't receive God's love. Does it invite God in? Yes. How does it invite God in? This is what it does. It invites God in. It's what? an how? open invitation from me to God. Yes. To enter my being, into yes. my soul. Yes. So God, for part of God, part of God's very nature, love, mm. will enter your soul. And prayer is the, is, the, is the feeling, the feeling of desire and passion for it to enter you opens your heart to receive the feeling. Do you understand? And you, it doesn't matter how much truth you deal with, you will not feel it. It doesn't matter how many addictions you deal with, you will not feel it. It doesn't matter how many, how many you know, things you mention about feeling the adult facade, feeling the hurt child, feeling, you won't feel it. You know why? Because unless the passionate desire to receive God's love is present in your soul, your soul won't be open and you won't receive it. Now, this week, we have tried to help you with all of the reasons why you don't have a passionate desire. <laughs> Does that make sense? And there's, there's literally hundreds of reasons inside of any person as to why they don't have passionate desires. A lot of it's about their addictions and their facade and a lot of it's about their hurt that they have and their lack of trust, lack of faith, lack of use of their will. They have no faith in God, no faith in themselves, no faith in being overwhelmed. All these different things we mentioned are all the reason why you don't have a passionate desire. But to be honest with you, once you've also dealt with all of those reasons, it doesn't guarantee you're ever going to have a passionate desire for God's love. Right? Because a passionate desire for God's love must be something that you feel in your very heart. It's got to be something that you want with all of your being and nature. Right? And sure, all of those things we've dealt with this week help you get through all of the reasons why you don't have this passionate desire for God in your heart. But in the end, even after you deal with all of these different things, which will help you clear away all of the debris and all of the crap that's inside of us that causes us to not have a passionate desire, it doesn't guarantee that you'll have a passionate desire. The passionate desire is an exercise or function of two primary things. One is your faith in God and God's nature, and two is your will to receive. Your, the exercise of your desire to receive. And sure, all the things we've discussed over the last eight days will help you exercise a desire and will help you build faith and will help you get rid of all the reasons why you don't have those things, which are all going to be part of your growth towards God. But in the end, it will not guarantee that you will receive God's love. The only way you can guarantee to receive God's love is by having prayer. Prayer is your only way you can guarantee receiving God's love. And what is prayer? It is a sincere, passionate longing for it. Do, do you see? That's what prayer is. So let's define prayer. It is a sincere... Passionate, longing, directed towards God to receive God's love. So while everything that we have discussed with you this week will help you, because everything we've discussed this week are the reasons why you don't have one of these things called a sincere, passionate longing, right? even after those things have been done, it doesn't guarantee that you'll have a sincere, passionate longing. 
Because a sincere, passionate longing is an exercise of your desire and will, your passion that's within your soul, desire or will, to actually begin this interaction with God. Now, maybe to help you understand that, we can, not, we can reflect upon a relationship with a person. So let's say I want a relationship with Mary. Let's say, let's say there's a possibility that we could have a relationship, right? So there's Mary over there and I'm here. G'day, darling. And, and we've got this possibility of having a relationship, right? Let's say I deal with all of my addictions. Is there still a possibility of having a relationship? Yes. Probably a better possibility, right? I've gotten rid of... But is, does it mean I will have be a guaranteed relationship with her? No, it doesn't, does it? And let's say I, I go, and go then and deal with all of my hurt. Right? And then I come back to, and, and I look at Mary and I start to think, oh, I want to have a relationship with her. Is, is it still a guarantee that I'm going to have a relationship with her? No. I've dealt with my hurt. It's going to improve my chances, but it still doesn't guarantee I'm going to have a relationship with her. And then let's say I forgive all the people I need to forgive and repent towards all the people I need to repent towards. And then come running back to try and have this relationship. Does this guarantee that I'm still going to have a relationship with Mary? No, it doesn't. It might help my chances again, mightn't it? I'll have improved quite substantially after this point in time in terms of my character, my nature, you know, all of the crap that comes out of me will all be gone and yet it still doesn't guarantee that I'm going to have a relationship with Mary. So the question then becomes, how do I start this relationship with Mary? It requires a number of things on Mary's part and a number of things on mine, doesn't it? What does it require on Mary's part? What does it require? If we, if we have the mics, so Deidre? Uh, Mary has to want to have a relationship. Yes, she does. Now let's say I just replace Mary with God. Now Mary won't like that analogy, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> let's say I'm replacing Mary with God. Does God want to have a relationship with you? Are you sure? <laughs> well, most, a lot of you aren't sure. Right, because you think God's punishing. You know, what kind of relationship does God want? You know, like, I'm a bit worried about that. You know, maybe God wants to take over my will, you know, like the Christians will believe or whatever. Maybe God wants to manipulate my life for the rest of my life and, I, and I'm going to be some kind of robot doing all these things that God wants me to do. Maybe it's like that. This is what some of our beliefs are. But, but down, the truth is, the actual undeniable truth from, from a person's uh, perspective who knows and has had this relationship is that God does want a relationship with me and God wants a personal relationship with you. It's a pretty amazing thing actually. The, the greatest being in the universe wants a personal relationship with you and doesn't want any go-between. Like if I wanted a personal relationship with Mary, would I go, okay, I think the way I'm going to get a personal relationship with Mary is have a relationship with Suzanne. And, and, and somehow my relationship with Suzanne is going to make, improve my chances with Mary. Do you think that's the case? I don't think so. I'm just having a relationship with Suzanne. I'm not having one with Mary. Right? So, so firstly, God does want the relationship with me directly without any intercessor, without any mediator, without any go-between with you directly. God wants a relationship with you without any of those things. Right. So as far as the whole setup of a relationship goes from God's perspective, God's already doing everything God possibly can in order to have a relationship with you. <coughs> God's already doing it. There's not a single thing that God isn't attempting to do with you in order to get a relationship with you. And that applies to the person who's the darkest, evilest person on the planet and whoever is the nicest, not loveliest person. It doesn't make any difference. God is doing the same amount of things or attempting to in order to have the relationship get established. Does that make sense? But then we come to the other half of the equation. 
So we've established that I am never going to have a relationship with Mary if Mary doesn't want a relationship. Right? But I'm saying in, in our case with God, God does want the relationship. So what's causing me to not have one? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? It must be something about me, something I feel that causes me to not engage this relationship with passion and desire. And that's what I'd like you to think about over the coming months. What are the things within you that cause you to not have a passionate desire to engage this relationship that God is already doing everything in God's power to do? Without breaking your will or without breaking the laws of love, God is already doing everything that God can do to establish this relationship with you. And what is it inside of you that prevents that relationship? Well, the main thing that prevents a relationship is the lack of sincere, passionate longing to receive God's love. In other words, the main thing that prevents the relationship is the lack of prayer. That's the main thing that prevents your relationship right now. So while I must agree that, that not having your will developed prevents a relationship and not having the you know, faith prevents your relationship and not having the, the um, you know, still having addictions prevents the relationship, not wanting to feel yourself prevents the relationship, not wanting to address the issues of who you really are prevents the relationship, not wanting to feel your addictions prevents the relationship, but the biggest possible thing that prevents the relationship is none of those things. It is your lack of prayer, your lack of a sincere, passionate longing for God. So now we come to your homework, because that's the end of my talk. So what's your homework? Develop a sincere, passionate longing to connect with God. That's your homework. In other words, every day, and Mary's gone through, if you were really using your will, what would you do? Every day. You, you wouldn't do it, you know, Saturday morning, have a prayer to God, five minutes, and then wait till next Wednesday afternoon to do it, would you? It would be something that you're beginning to engage every moment of your life. In fact, your soul-based longings can be present even while you're doing other things. So you can be talking in front of a crowd and still have a soul-based longing for God. You can be home doing something else and have a soul-based longing for God. You can be eating, have a soul-based longing for God. And there's the prayer. And once the prayer is engaged, at some point, whenever you become sincere you will receive some of this love. And once you receive some, you will then understand what the sincerity was that was required. Yep. If we go, Karen. Do I not first have to have... Um an emotional experience where I let go of some of my previous concepts of what God is like so that I've got an inkling of uh, the fact that God is loving. Of course. That's how you, one of the ways you're going to develop a sincere, passionate desire. While you hold on to your false beliefs about God, do you think you're going to have a sincere desire for God? Of course not. No. So I agree, you are. So your homework was develop a sincere, passionate desire for God. That's going to involve yeah, letting go all of these false concepts. So remember Mary said, what kind of spiritual food are you nourishing yourself on over the next few months? Get rid of all of, this, all of the stuff that you read about, about you know, 
when I say get rid of it all, get rid of all the stuff that you, that's superfluous in your life where you read this in the newspaper and all those other things and replace it instead with knowledge about God, the actual truth about God. And allow yourself to feel what the actual truth about God may be. Um, so that can be just developing an awareness of the positive attributes of God that I haven't already got false beliefs about. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, I understand what you mean. Can I just, even your question is flawed with, with all sorts of errors. When you ask for the positive attributes of God, that implies God has negative attributes. God doesn't have any negative attributes. So can we just call it the attributes of God, all of which are positive? I guess what I meant is that I, I don't think I've ever been... I don't think there is in me a disbelief in the beauty that of the physical creations of God. So it's easy for me to connect to God in Through the them? physical Yeah, so beauty. sit in front of the beauty and then feel God in that matter. In, like There's things you definitely can do in that regard, I agree. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Don't avoid doing those. That's a part of developing this sincere, passionate longing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yep. You've got to get away from your head a bit though, Karen. Like, this is a problem that many of us have. Sincere, passionate longing comes from our emotional self. Right? So we're going to have to, in the process of developing prayer, which is developing a sincere, passionate longing that exists within your soul, in, which is prayer, isn't it? We're going to, so if we're ever going to pray properly, we're going to have to have our heart involved. We are. And whatever gets your heart involved with God, I'd be tempted to do that. You know, I'd be tempted to take, take actions to do that. Of course, for most of us, we're distracted here, distracted there, distracted everywhere else, and we don't give much time for, for our heart to be involved with God in the process. But you can get to the point where your heart is involved with God almost all day, every day. And at the moment where it's really sincere and passionate, you will receive some God's love in that moment. And when you do, you might get a bit overwhelmed, you get a bit teary, you start crying, and then you shut down your emotion. This is what many of you do, shut down the emotion, and then you go, ah, oh, there it is. I'm not really passionate yet. I'm shutting down my emotion. So there's a, that I need to, de to develop my sincere, passionate longing. I need to let myself be more emotionally expressive. So I, I look at you looking at me and, and a lot of you are not engaged with your face. So there's all this stuff going on inside, right? And your face doesn't show what's inside. You know why that is? Because you're not fully engaged with your soul because if you were, you'd be you know, happy when you're happy, you'd be sad when you're sad, you'd be, you'd, you'd be engaged in the process even of learning. I don't know if you've watched Mary or myself when Mary's speaking or Mary when I'm speaking. Right? You see a person whose face does all sorts of things. You know, I don't know if, it's, very, it's very hard to ignore what Mary's feeling. You can see it on her face every time. And if she's upset with something I just said, you'll see she's upset. And, and, if, she, and if she feels happy with what I said, she goes, you know, she'll be happy, right? <laughs> and I'm the same if you watch me. Like you, you can see what's going on. You know, you saw me up there behind the camera and the signs were going, <laughs> what am I feeling, right? Now, this is what you need to do. You need to connect with these passionate emotions about God. This is what is a part of your sincerity. Prayer is the sincere, passionate longing for God. So it's not like blah, 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 to God. It's not like you doing a whole heap of intellectual words to God, although it may help you connect to your sincere, passionate longing if you say some words to God. Right? However, it is a feeling you're going to have to generate within yourself through the exercise of your will. And that's how you receive love. And when you receive love, it will transform you and it will make it much easier for you to love. You receive some of God's love, that's very, very different than, than trying to develop your own. You see, all the advice we've given you this week is about developing your will to want to be more loving people, right? 
and showing you where your will isn't engaged. But to be honest with you, if you develop your will and you start walking your way through all of these things and you start developing a sincere, passionate longing to receive God's love, what will happen is many of these things will be automatically engaged. Like, How do you think I learnt to do all of these things? Because somebody taught me how. Right? And that person taught me by me being open to receive love and then I got taught of how to look at my addictions, how to look at my facade, how to honestly examine myself, how to see, oh, there's my real self, my, all these self, parts of myself, where, how to look after them and nurture them and care for them and how to forgive and how to repent. All these things God taught me because I received some of God's love and when, my, when I receive some of God's love, God's love teaches me how to do these things. So what I learned was my most important task is to remove from myself any impediment to the reception of God's love, which means to remove from myself any impediment to prayer. Remove from myself any impediment to a sincere, passionate longing to receive love from God. That becomes your focus. If that becomes your focus, you'll meet your soulmate and it won't matter whoever she is, whatever she is, it won't matter where she is, you will not be shaken from this relationship with God. At the moment, if, if, if you, many of you who are in partnerships, if your wife left seeking God, you would too. Because you're more interested in getting a relationship with your wife than you are with God, or your husband than you are with God. Right? That's the fact. We need to change that. We need to change that by developing this sincere longing for God. So what I would like to encourage you to do is to do all of the things that we've encouraged you this week because they are all important parts of helping deconstruct all of the layers and layers of stuff that's over the top of your true passionate desire and also correcting the direction of your desires and passions. But understand, even after you've done all of that, it doesn't guarantee your relationship with God. A relationship with God can only be guaranteed through prayer. And so unless you choose to pray, no relationship with God will be possible. And unless you choose to pray, you will not receive God's love. It doesn't matter how much you become a loving person. I, I know people in the sixth sphere of the spirit world, very loving people, much more loving than you are, I can tell you. And, and you know, if you sat in their presence, you would feel like overwhelmed by their love. But they still have no relationship with God. They still haven't received God's love because they don't and have not engaged prayer. Does that make sense? So what I would like to see all people who hear about divine truth do is engage prayer. And if you were, as, when you were listening to Mary, you would do it trying to do more, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd do it all the time, repetitively. You'd learn as much as you could about it. You'd read things about it. You would do things about it if you really wanted this relationship. And if you don't really want this relationship, be honest. Say, I don't really want this relationship yet. And yet I know that if I can get this relationship established, it can be had the greatest impact on my life or at least think that it might be possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn about all the reasons why I don't want the relationship. That would be more positive than just ignoring it altogether. So what would I like to encourage you over the coming months is to engage prayer. And if you can't engage it, because remember, it by definition is sincere and it by definition is passionate, it by definition is a longing of the soul, if you can't engage it, try first to examine all the reasons why you can't and undo those reasons. Because they are the reasons that will, they are the things that will help your relationship with God the most. 
So many of you in the past have been engaging things like to solve relationship problems with each other or to you know, deal with certain things that you notice are faults with yourself. But, but my focus would be focus on the things that cause a problem, a fracture between your relationship with God, you and God. Do them first. Focus on them first. Because as you receive God's love, these other things will sort themselves out if you still contain this desire for sincerity. The other things will automatically be exposed through this relationship with God. So do you think you might be able to try that? Yeah. So that's what I'd like to leave you with, given that a stab. Yeah?